Dig deep enough into anything, it seems, and you find maths. That observation has led some mathematicians and philosophers to the conclusion that everything, including ourselves, is part of a mathematical structure. At first, this seems incredible. After all, we live in a world full of colours, emotions, sensations and experiences, which we can't, for now at least, transform into numbers or equations. Surely the universe would be a sterile place, a ghostly shadow of the real thing, if maths was all there was to reality. Yet in the end, all matter is made of fundamental particles, such as electrons and quarks, the properties of which appear to be purely mathematical. As soon as we try to chase down an individual particle like an electron, it seems to lose its substance and wash out into a wave of probability. What we'd taken to be physical, hard-edged and tangible, melts into something abstract and without substance. Space, too, on close examination, reduces to a mere mathematical structure. This idea that maths underpins the physical universe and is perhaps its foundational essence has been hugely influential in Western thought. It was first expressed strongly in the 6th century BC by Pythagoras and his followers, who lived by the motto, all is number. To the Pythagoreans, each number had a certain meaning and character. Odd numbers were male, even were female. One was the number of reason, two of opinion, three of harmony, and so on. Such mystical beliefs may have been picked up by Pythagoras during his travels in Egypt and Babylon, regions where numerology was popular. But there's no question that the Pythagoreans were also powerfully influenced by observations of the world around them, especially their discoveries in music. They noticed that harmonious notes produced by a vibrating string stopped at different lengths could be characterized by simple numerical ratios. Halving the length of the vibrating part of the string gave a note that was in unison with, though an octave higher, than the original. Stopping the string two-thirds the way along gave rise to a perfect fifth. Not satisfied with a mere earthly connection between maths and music, Pythagoras projected the link into the heavens. In a theory that became known as the harmony of the spheres, he taught that the sun, moon and planets each give off a unique tone as they move around their orbits. It was a belief that carried through into Renaissance times and in particular to Johann Kepler, who gave us the laws of planetary motion and yet also argued passionately for this antiquated notion of cosmic music in his Harmonies Mundi, the harmony of the world. Pythagoras and those who congregated around him were obsessive and over the top in their convictions, as cult members typically are, but there's no question that their deep fascination with numbers spurred the development of maths and had a crucial impact on future generations of philosophers, scientists and mathematicians in the West. Their devotion to everything numerical led them to classify numbers as even and odd, prime and composite, perfect and amicable. They introduced figurate numbers, triangular numbers, rectangular numbers and the like, as a way of representing numbers geometrically. They discovered, and detested, irrational numbers and showed how to construct the five regular solids, cube, tetrahedron, octahedron, dodecahedron and icosahedron. In their drive to demonstrate that maths was the key to understanding everything in existence, they pioneered number theory and set the scene for modern physical science, which assumes from the outset that it will find maths behind every phenomenon it investigates. Aristotle, who lived a couple of hundred years after Pythagoras, didn't buy into the harmony of the spheres. He was too much of a materialist for that, but he certainly backed the notion that maths was fundamental. The principles of mathematics, he wrote, are the principles of all things. The same sentiment has echoed down the ages right up to the present day. Galileo, a scientist in the true sense that he experimented to test his theories, asserted the book of nature is written in the language of mathematics. 
French philosopher and mathematician René Descartes said, With me everything turns into mathematics. Many contemporary physicists think along much the same lines. In the words of string theorist and mathematician Brian Greene, physicists have come to realize that mathematics, when used with sufficient care, is a proven pathway to truth. It's a common, in fact conventional, stance among scientists and engineers that maths is the best and most precise way to explain the way the world works. There's no doubt of the effectiveness of formulas such as E equals mc squared, Newton's laws of motion, and the equations of general relativity. As far as these and other familiar mathematical rules of nature go, the matter isn't in dispute. If you want to land a spacecraft safely on Mars, you need to do the maths. Solve the equations that guide the vehicle's motion, otherwise it will never happen. Maths informs the design and explains the results of high-energy experiments by particle physicists, it is essential to every successful large engineering project, and predicts the motion of all objects, from cannonballs to comets. Yet while these examples demonstrate how useful maths can be, do they imply that everything in the physical world follows mathematical rules, and that maths is somehow the bedrock? on which reality rests, it's very easy to be persuaded so. American theoretical physicist Steven Weinberg has written about how math seems to have prior knowledge of what's going on in the universe. There is a spooky quality about the ability of mathematicians to get there ahead of physicists. It's as if, when Neil Armstrong first landed on the moon, he wrote, he found in the lunar dust the footsteps of Jules Verne. In a famous 1960 paper, The Unreasonable Effectiveness of Mathematics in the Physical Sciences, Hungarian-American theoretician Eugene Wigner noted how the mathematical formulation of the physicist's often crude experience leads in an uncanny number of cases to an amazingly accurate description of a large class of phenomena. A well-known example of this unreasonable effectiveness is Newton's law of gravitation. Newton saw connection between the parabolic paths followed by projectiles on Earth and the motion of the Moon and planets in their elliptical orbits. At the time he put forward his law of gravity, he could verify it to an accuracy of only about 4%. Today, we know it holds good to better than one ten thousandth of a percent. In his essay, Wigner concludes, while science is composed of laws which were originally based on a small, carefully selected set of observations, often not measured very accurately, these laws have later been found to apply over much wider ranges of observation, and much more accurately than the original data justified. Physics is replete with instances of mathematical predictions running ahead of observational evidence. It's also true that areas of maths have been developed for which a perfect match was later found, completely unexpectedly, with aspects of the real world. This happened in the case of matrix algebra, the rules of which were first figured out by English mathematician Arthur Cayley in the mid-1850s. About 70 years later, German physicist Werner Heisenberg, working in collaboration with Pasquale Jordan and Max Born, realized that these rules for manipulating matrices were formally identical to methods he was using to understand how particles behave at the quantum level. Future applications of matrix mechanics in situations beyond those that Heisenberg foresaw allowed predictions to be made that agree with experimental data to within one part in 10 million. Time and again, scenarios that arise from the manipulation of symbols are played out exactly in the real world. The equations of general relativity insisted that the universe as a whole should be expanding or contracting. Einstein didn't believe this, and so he invented his cosmological constant to counteract the expansion. Yet the equations turned out to be correct, 
at some level they knew about the growth of the cosmos before humans did. The Higgs boson, too, popped out of the maths 48 years before it was finally detected by an experiment at the Large Hadron Collider. Somehow, knowledge of the Higgs was contained in the equations that described it decades before it was manufactured and observed in physical reality. In the words of Brian Greene, maybe it's because math is reality. English mathematical physicist Roger Penrose sees a grand, self-consistent and self-sustaining loop emerging from this worldview. We have a close circle of consistency here. The laws of physics produce complex systems, and these complex systems lead to consciousness, which then produces mathematics, which can then encode, in a succinct and inspiring way, the very underlying laws of physics that gave rise to it. Some regard this Neo-Pythagorean view of the relationship between maths and reality as becoming more and more compelling as physics, propelled by ever more abstruse and abstract calculations, continues to make remarkable progress. We're now able to foretell with exceptional precision much of the behaviour of matter and energy, from the scale of subatomic particles to that of superclusters of galaxies. If only at some point we could forge a new description of gravity from a marriage of quantum mechanics and general relativity, we might have in our grasp, so the hope goes, a theory of everything. It's impossible to deny the power of the equations that describe how nature operates across the unimaginably broad spectrum of lengths, times, masses and energies that characterises the universe. It seems inevitable, too, that physics will become vastly more capable in the years ahead, as the maths it deploys offers a theoretical description of the world in increasingly exquisite detail. Already it's clear that the maths used in science is far more than just a handy notational system. It's a highly effective way of modelling the universe. The question is whether it runs deeper than that. And in the final analysis, math serves as a window on reality itself. <laughs>